Hello art students, welcome to the studio. Today we are going to be working with complementary colors and shape. So just a reminder, or maybe this is your first time hearing about complementary colors, but complementary colors are colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. So red and green, purple and yellow, orange and blue. So what does that mean to be opposite? Well, it literally means that red is lacking green. So when you set these next to each other, they're going to pop. They're going to make a statement. They will stand out and be dramatic. So we see this often with sports teams or in marketing where they know, huh, if I put these two colors together, it's going to make a statement. So that's a little bit about complementary colors. Another fact, if you were to mix a complementary color, then it will turn into a neutral. So if you're looking to find reds neutral, you would actually just mix it with green. If you were to mix orange into blue, you would get a brownish looking neutral. So that's a little bit about color mixing, which we're not doing today. We are going to be working with positive and negative shape. Positive shape. Positive shape is the object that we are looking at. In this case, you are going to be cutting a positive shape and the negative is the space behind it. So this is the negative shape behind it. Now you may have heard of it also as positive and negative space, positive and negative shape. Kind of just depends on what we're talking about with um, what we're doing in art making. So you are going to want to find somewhere in your house complementary colors. If you don't have construction paper, you can actually get some white copy paper, get a crayon, and color the paper. And there you have it. You have a color piece of paper. So I'm using blue and orange for this project. I'm going to take my blue and I'm going to fold it in half, just like that. Now my next step, you could use a pencil or a pen. I would recommend a pencil, but I am going to use a pen so that it stands out. Now you just want to make something that's fun, a fun line. It could be a zigzag, it could be um, an angle, and then maybe a swoop. And let's see, I'm going to start from the corner. And then I'm going to bring it over here. And bring it back to the corner. There we have it. Next step, cut it out. I actually like using small scissors because I find it makes it easier to cut corners, but if you only have big scissors on hand, that's okay too. Now you might find with some of the angles that you make, I'm assuming you're going to make a couple, that it works out or it doesn't work out. So you gotta be careful, you can't get too, too creative on the spirals. You can only do so much with the line. Okay, now I open it up. Oh my, it looks, to me it kinda looks like a beetle. I don't know if you see that, but that's what I see. And I'm gonna put it on. Now look at how that blue pops against that orange. And I'm gonna glue it on. And you could use liquid glue or you could use a glue stick. Now, if, if you're paying attention, you want to make sure that the side that you traced on is face down. Sometimes when I'm working, I'm not paying attention and then I realize, oops, a daisy, I see my lines, I see my mark. And you're going to try to center it as best you can. And then I want to take that other, this was the negative shape. I'm going to take that negative shape and a cut, but that's fine. I'm 
I'm gonna put it here. All right, so I'm gonna take that negative shape, glue it on, and look at that. I have the reverse. So there we have our negative and positive shape along with the complementary color. Now, if you wanted to, you could work with black and white. Black and white also creates a visual pop as well. And you see that this design is much more simple, but that's okay. It totally makes a huge statement. So I've worked with the complementary colors and you can see here I have my purple and yellow, and then again, another example of my blue and orange, and green and red. All right, now that you have completed your positive and negative shape, we're gonna take it one step further. But before I move on, I want you to think about Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night. Close your eyes and think about it. Now, if you've never seen it, definitely go get a picture of it, like right now. If you look at it, there is so much blue that fills the artwork, and then in the sky, glowing, is a beautiful orange moon. Those are complementary colors. Easy as that, look at that, that's what's in my hand right now. So anyway, I just wanted you to think about how artists use complementary colors in their own art, again, to make it pop. There wasn't a lot of orange, just enough to make a very dramatic impression. So, back to negative and positive shape. All right, I'm gonna use red and green. Now, I'm gonna do the same steps. Fold my paper, create a fun, funky line. Do you see how I generally start on the corner? That's a nice place to always start and you'll see I'm going to end right at that corner. Do I have to? Nope. You can see in this one I did not. Okay and let's see. I'll do something like that. I haven't used too much of that type of line. Okay so everything's feeling pretty much the same. Not even pretty much the same, the same. And what's fun is the more you make, the more you can do with these images. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, what to do with your creations. This reminds me of a pop art city popping up off the globe. Do you see how I lift my scissors every time I cut? I don't need to feel like I need to continually be dragging it along the paper. I can take breaks. So that's just a tip. Slow down. Okay, so remember, it was at this point, look at that, that's a pretty fun shape. We put it on our paper, we're not gonna do that yet. I told you we're gonna take it one step further. We're gonna do it again. So my paper's already folded. zigzag lines going across. Let's see what happens. That's what's fun about art. Sometimes when we're working, we think we have a great idea and it is a good idea. But then once we're finished, we can look at it and say, oh, you know what? I can do more. And that is the creative process. The 
Should I do it one more time? I am. All I'm gonna do is just one swoop. Actually, no. I'm gonna do a swivelly line here. Like a slug. I hope it doesn't look like a slug though. I guess we'll find out. Now, let's hope we can put this all back together. I've got all my parts. Are we ready? I'm actually gonna start with this one first. This was the negative. This was what was around. Now remember when I said when you glue, you don't want that side showing, that side being the side with the pen or pencil. So make sure you flip that side over. So that's the side I'm gonna glue on. And again, you could use a glue stick or liquid glue, whatever you have on hand. Now I've been talking a lot about complementary colors and I want to make sure you know that if you don't have construction paper like this at home, it would be really interesting to see what you do have. What could you use? A magazine, a newspaper against black paper. Um, options are pretty endless. Okay, there's step one. Now, I'm not going to put this one back. I'm going to use the next one. I want to make sure it matches up. I think it went this way. Yeah, look at that. It goes right there. And I think I'm going to use my liquid glue again. So I'm using a six by six square. Just imagine if you were using a bigger piece of paper, you could do this a couple of times. This design. Again, I'm making sure that I have the pencil and pen facing up and I put the glue on that side. Sometimes when we rush, we don't pay attention. There's our positive shape. And then we've got that tiny little piece kind of looks like a worm. It goes right there. That's taking it to the next step. Multiple layers. Well, now that you've done a couple, the next thing you can do to put this artwork to use will be to make a banner. So I'm going to put a hole punch at the top of each one. And I was thinking to myself while I was doing this, if you have a brother or sister and you are doing this with them, if you know what a coat of arms is, it's a symbol, a symbol about you or your family, and you could almost come up with your own coat of arms and then put it together and each one could symbolize somebody in your family. That would be pretty cool. So now I'm going to take my string and you could use really whatever you want, whatever you have on hand, and thread it through. You can have ribbon, yarn, this is twine. And then you could hang it up in a window, maybe in your window bedroom window or maybe in your kitchen. I'm going to hang mine up in my studio. Oh, one more. Not done. That's what happens when you go too fast. There we go. Make sure they're spaced out. What do you think? 
it definitely pops because I use the complementary colors. Then you just need to figure out what side you want to hang it on. But that's the cool thing. If it's in a window, you'll see both sides. Good luck, have fun.